No, you break it. Tell them to sit down. Why don't you talk? No, you tell them to sit down. He's always drawing them in. Now, unfortunately, we've been raised in this room in a lot of charismania, that that's ongoing. Well, yeah, you know, the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, well, actually, that's not consistent with what Jesus said. He says we're in a marriage of expedience, not convenience. Expedience meaning that he's not going to help us get what we want, but what he wants and what the world needs, which between us and the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus, functioning in that way, things start to happen. The Holy Spirit, he's going to reprove, he's going to guide, he's going to speak, he's going to teach, he's going to reveal, he's going to glorify. There's all kinds of stuff Jesus talks about with the Holy Spirit, which is why I say it's just too huge to get into. But this is easy to get into. All of that is a preparation, which is our the first P today. He comforts us by preparing us for today, tomorrow, and the rest of our lives. It's preparation. This is all preparation. Holy Spirit's, I mean, that's what, and that's what Jesus was doing with the boys, right? He was always preparing them because he knew there was going to be a time he was going to go away. So he's preparing, he's preparing, he's preparing all the time. Preparation. He said at the beginning of this whole thing in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And he's referring to some place, not here, out in the glory zone, I'm not sure. But he went, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to send the Holy Spirit who's going to prepare you for that place. That's a nice way of looking at it. Jesus prepares the place. The Holy Spirit comes here and he prepares us for that place. Jesus, it's very clear, scripturally, it's very clear that he's our advocate in heaven. John talks about that. It's in Hebrews. He's advocating for us in, se in heaven constantly. That, we said this in week one. Some of you missed it. But that whole thing about ask what you will, that's what he was talking about. Whatever you ask me, I'll ask for you in heaven. We get caught up and we think he's saying, whatever you ask me, you know, I'm going to give you that. That's not what he said. You've got to read it. He said, I will do it. Do what, Jesus? Pray for you. I will go to the Father with whatever you ask of me. You ask it, I will intercede for you before the Father. That's what he was promising. What more could you ask for? Then you ask him for whatever. God, lower the interest rate. Jesus, lower the interest Go to the, the interest rate. Got to see that thing lowered. Jesus says, okay, I'll ask Dad about that. Our problem is the other end when Jesus might say, I know it's hard to understand this, but God's going to get more glory if that interest rate is not lowered. And that's where we have to walk in a place that says, okay, because that's what I want. That's what I want. That's my heart's desire is that someplace in this whole thing, God is glorified. Mm -hmm. I think he'd be glorified in a lower interest rate. <laughs> but he's saying, I know the way you guys think. But could you let me do things my way? You've asked. And, you know, we talked about that in week one, things like that. Not about your interest rate. But the point being that Jesus is interceding for us in heaven. And he sends an advocate. The Holy Spirit's called our advocate here on earth. So he's saying, you don't have to be looking up there all the time. You're, the Holy Spirit's right here. So Jesus is saying, we ask, we ask the Father. Jesus is asking Dad. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit, they're all one anyway. The Holy Spirit's doing his work here. Knock, knock, knock. But be prepared when what we're asking for is not the world's best, our best, or anything like that. So there's tons of stuff with our paracletes. I want to make it clear that the Holy Spirit is a person. You can look up these things. He has emotions. He can be grieved, vexed, offended, quenched, tempted, lied to, there's all scriptures for this, defrauded, resisted, rejected, disobeyed, ignored, and blasphemed. He can also be believed, yielded to, obeyed, honored, heard, pleased, and delighted. Now, some people call the Holy Spirit a force. I don't know how you can even look at any of those things as a force. He has a mind. He convicts, he counsels, teaches, has communion. There's seven different kinds of prayer that the Holy Spirit, again, it's all over the place. This is a person we're talking about, as much a person as we see the Father and the Son. We said in week one when Jesus said, Father, sanctify them, when he prayed for us for our sanctification, and he said, sanctify them with your truth, your word is truth, that we're sanctified by the word. But the actual sanctification process is one that the Holy Spirit does. The sanctification of the believer 
to make us like Jesus is a responsibility and work of the Spirit. So now you can relax. You don't have to make yourself like Jesus. All you have to do is listen to the Holy Spirit and let him make you like Jesus. That's his job. He's the sanctifier. We have to give him something to work with, though. He's working on this holy union. When I say the holy union, we're well aware of the marriage that's coming. It's going to be a holy union, which means without spot or wrinkle or anything else. It's the Holy Spirit's job to make us holy so that we can enter into a holy union. But again, he can't make us holy without our willingness to become holy. So we work with him in this area. The Holy Spirit, he strengthens and he prepares us. So let's face it, me availing myself to holiness can be monumental. Because I don't want to do that. It's not as much fun. I want to do this. But that's not really consistent with holiness. The main thing about holiness, and I'm not talking about like glowing like a light bulb and, oh, the saint, the Lord. And it's like, oh God, what's going on in here? Instead of just saying, you know, I was praying for you and the Holy Spirit showed me, shared with me. It gets weird after a while. The point being that the holiness that we're talking about here is God's holiness. You say, well, yeah, he's clean. and Yeah, 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 yeah. But when we say, when David said things like, there's no one beside you, there's none like you. I didn't learn that from the church. I learned that from the Holy Spirit. I had to hear that from him because that's not something the church is really big on. <laughs> saying, well, actually, Keith, there's never been anyone like you. And there never will be again. You are holy and unique. When God says, be holy as I am holy, it's like saying, you know what, I am who I am. Jeez, where did I hear that? Popeye. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of Moses. Well, Popeye said that too. <laughs> and that's all that I am. <laughs> and God says to us, so be holy, be unique. When they were, to when they were told, like in the Old Testament, to be cleaning all the stuff and doing all the stuff, if you think of it like this, it was dirty. Everything was dirty, so let's clean it up so it doesn't look like or smell like all the stuff that's dirty. What you're really doing is you're making it unique. You're making it into something that it's currently not. While we're thinking about the cleaning up process and, oh, 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 oh I'm such a sinner, sinner. You know, while we're thinking of that, God's saying, well, yeah, you can, you can go there if you want. You can major on what a sinner you are. Or you can major on the fact that I've cleansed you from your sin, because you can never do it. You can major on that and come to the place of recognizing how holy you actually are, how unique you actually are. There's two different ways of looking at it. There always is. How much I've got, how much I don't have. I'll tell you what, I've never found much joy in majoring on thinking about what I don't have. I found a lot more joy in thinking of what I do have. I don't like diabetes. I fight it every day. I don't sit around thinking about how much I hate diabetes. I can, you know, there's, so, I, there's a lot more things I can do than I can't do. Right. Now, if you keep throwing it at me over and over and over and over again, you're a diabetic, you're a diabetic, you're, then I'm going to be consumed by that. And I'm not going to be able to come into the holiness. And God is saying, be holy, be holy. In other words, he's given us the Holy Spirit and what's being used, we're going to look at the scripture in a minute. He's called the spirit of holiness. Makes sense. The Holy Spirit, spirit of holiness. And when he sanctifies us, we're sanctified by the word, by the spirit, by faith, by prayer, by the name, the blood of Jesus. Trials and tribulations, there's a good one. We don't want them, but the truth is they work in our sanctification process. They're bad stuff that do good things. Go figure. Spirit of holiness. I want to challenge all of us with this one thing. I don't mean a challenge, like a challenge challenge, but a way of thinking about this. Jesus made it very clear that the Holy Spirit would testify, that he would bear witness. And he's also told them that you're going to be persecuted. Life on earth is a tough neighborhood. And when you're walking through it, you're going to have problems with people that don't want your light to shine or whatever. There's going to be persecution. But he's saying that during persecution, you have the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, in the midst of that. I like to think of it this way. 
it says in 1 Peter 2, that when Jesus was reviled, he reviled not back. So when somebody gives you a hard time, we don't give them a hard time back because we're holy. Because we're holy. Yeah, see, anybody can give somebody else a hard time back when they're giving you a hard time. That's what the world does. What he's saying, what Jesus is saying, is they're going to give you a hard time. Don't think about what you're going to say and what you just relax. I'll fill your mouth with whatever, and I tell you this, it'll be holy. Your response will be unlike anything the world's ever seen. They're going to be looking at you, now I know you're a freak, because you should have just sworn back at me. You should have thrown me the bird, just like I threw you the bird. You should have been rolling down your window and screaming and yelling at me. I just cut you off. Holy would be somebody who's cut somebody off, pulling over and stopping and saying, excuse me, I'm really, really sorry. I feel so bad for what I did. I'm in a hurry, but I shouldn't have done that. That'll blow somebody's mind. And then you give them a $20 bill and you say, you know what, have lunch on me. The early church, I want to I wanna just put it in this context, the early church had nothing. They didn't have any buildings. They didn't have Bibles. They didn't have technology. They were just people who basically were not discriminated against, who lived and loved together as the Holy Spirit helper brought them together to bear one another, not just to bear them, but to bear together whatever they're facing, reminding them of his word. These people, if they were nothing else, they were unique. They weren't holy like we think of, you know, wearing robes and glowing and all that. They were unique. They were holy in that sense. Romans, they stuck together. Jews, we know they stuck together. People of different social status, rich with the rich, poor with the poor, they stuck together. Men had the things that they did, women had, they stuck together. Gender. You can go on and on about the people groups. The Holy Spirit comes along and he brings together fishermen, tax collectors, men and women for a patriarchal society that was huge, absolutely huge. The women that you read about that were with Jesus, that was about as scandalous as it got. Jesus brings, the Holy Spirit brings them together. Free and slaves, the poor, lepers, Samaritans, Gentiles, you name it. And now what do we got? We got a group of people that the only thing they have in common is they have the Holy Spirit.